should you get the iPhone 7 here in 2024? So the iPhone 7 was released back in 2016, which was eight years ago. And this device still works really well here in 2024. However, it doesn't compete with some of the modern smartphones. And let's first start off with the specifications of this device. And we're gonna start with the design. So on the back, we just have one camera. And this is unless if you get the iPhone 7 Plus because the iPhone 7 Plus has two cameras on the back. And on the bottom, this was also the first iPhone to ever remove the headphone jack. And at the top, we also have the FaceTime camera. Also, one of my favorite features of this iPhone is the fact that it still has a home button. Modern smartphone companies don't do this anymore. And that's really all the rest to cover for the design of the iPhone 7. And let's move on to the, to the hardware of the iPhone 7. And starting off with the storage, this device has 32, 64, or 128 gigabytes. The one that I have here is 128. And for the average person, I do not recommend getting 32 gigabytes because it's just not enough for 2024. Now, as for the speed of this iPhone, this device is just fast enough to be able to use as your primary phone here in 2024. It has two gigabytes of RAM for the no normal iPhone 7, and it has three gigabytes of RAM for the iPhone 7 Plus. And it also has an Apple A10 chip for both the 7 and the 7 Plus. And keep in mind that right now we have the A17 Pro chip for the iPhone 15 Pro. And that's really it for the hardware of this iPhone. Let's now talk about the display. So the iPhone 7 display quality is 326 pixels per inch with a screen resolution of 1334 by 750. And as for the 7 Plus, it is, a, it is a lot higher. It's 401 pixels per inch with a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080. Even though the iPhone 7 Plus has a really high display quality, the iPhone 7 still holds up really well. I can't really see any of the pixels even when I try looking at it closely. As for the camera quality, it still is really good. It just doesn't compare to modern smartphones. So let's try doing a camera test on this. And this device actually has a 12 megapixel camera with five megapixels on the front. And let's try taking a photo test on this device. So here's what the photos look like on this device. And even though this device is really old and it doesn't compare to modern smartphones, it does still hold up really well. I'm still able to take some really nice photos on this device. And let's compare this to the iPhone 14. So here's a photo from the iPhone 14 Pro. It does look a lot better. And I am using artificial lighting, not the natural lighting from outside. And let's now do a video test. So here's what video looks like on the iPhone 7. And of course, I'm still not using natural lighting because it's dark outside. And let's try focusing on something else so you can see the details. And this was actually my main iPhone camera up until I got the iPhone 14 Pro. So I did use this on my YouTube videos for quite a while, uh, up until about a year and a half ago. And here's what video looks like on the iPhone 14 Pro. So there is a huge difference here. And keep in mind that the iPhone 14 Pro did come out six years after the iPhone 7. Now that is it for the camera test. Let's now move to the battery. So this device has 1,960 million powers of battery, which is not really that good. It won't last you that long. But if you get the iPhone 7 Plus, you'll get 2,900 million powers, which is actually really good. And if we compare the latest iPhone 15 Pro, the battery life will last uh, 3,290 million powers. So it's really not much of a difference from the latest iPhone. So on the iPhone 7 Plus, you will be getting a really good battery. That's it for the battery. The last thing we'll talk about before we go into whether it's worth it and how much it costs is the software version. So this device originally came with iOS 10, and as of now, it only goes up to iOS 15. So right now you can see it only goes up to iOS 15.8.2. So this device won't be getting the latest updates, but Apple does still drop security updates in case there's any bugs, and they will continue doing this for at least the next couple of years. So the overall price of the iPhone SE is actually pretty cheap. It costs only about 40 bucks on places like eBay, and do I recommend getting this device here in 2024? Well, my answer is no. And that is because this device doesn't run well here in 2024. If we compare this to the iPhone 8, which costs about 60 bucks on eBay, it does run a lot more smoothly and it'll last you a lot longer. Or my other top suggestion is that if you wanna spend even more money or maybe about 100 bucks, I would go for the iPhone SE 2. And I'm actually gonna have a link in the description for a playlist for all my iPhone reviews this includes my, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone SE 2, which are my best alternatives. 
However, I could still recommend this to someone who's on a really tight budget of just 40 bucks. Otherwise, I recommend that you go higher for the iPhone 8 or the iPhone SE 2. That's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed this review. And if you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out my channel to see more videos like this in the future.